Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakat. Welcome back to Tafsir. Uh, we are discussing the Tafsir. But before, as I mentioned, before we go into the discussion of the Tafsir and the understanding of it, we are, uh, as I mentioned in the previous program or today, we are discussing the compilation of the Holy Quran, how the Holy Quran was compiled. And as I said, it was done in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, concerning the revelation in stages, now, the Holy Quran was not revealed in one instance. We need to understand this. But through what we can say, a, a, a word, piecemeal process, with small numbers or small portions or some ayats were revealed at one time. Now, Hazrat Ibn Ashtar, he states that the normally one or two ayats were revealed to the Holy Prophet wasallam at once. One or two ayats were revealed at once. However, scholars such as Imam, uh, Imam Bayhaqi, Hadrat uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they are of the opinion that four or five ayats were revealed at one time. So there are difference of opinions. Some are that only one or two ayats were revealed once. Uh, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Ali, and Imam Bayhaqi are of the opinion that five or four ayats were revealed once at a time. Now, the Holy Quran revelation started with the pagan Arabs as a witness it, a peace and a process slowly, slowly, and it was revealed to them according to need or certain um, situation would arise or a time of um, questions and they were want answers. So the Quran was revealed at the, the, the time it was needed the most. And because of this slow or partial revelation of the Holy Quran, the, the, the pagan Arabs or the disbelievers who were against the Muslims at that time, they taunted the Muslims and they were asking them, why is the Quran not revealed at once if it was a divine book? If you claim that your Quran is a divine book, why it was not revealed all at once? The, therefore, I will ask you now to put up slide number four, which Allah Almighty replies to them. Allah Almighty replies in this, uh, in, in this verse of the Holy Quran, chapter 25, verse 32. <laughs> which translates and the Quran this is revealed and we have this Quran is which we have divided into parts from time to time in order that thou mightest recite to men and intervals and those who reject faith they say this verse which translates and those who reject faith they say why the Quran was not revealed at once why is the Quran not revealed to him all at once? Thus it was revealed and we may strengthen by their, their heart thereby. And we have rehearsed it to, to thee in slow, well-arranged stages gradually. This verse has two parts. This is the first part of the, the verse of, uh, in question, 25 verse 32, where Allah Almighty states, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنَ جُمْلَةً وَاهِدَةً كَذَلِكَ لِنُتَبِّتَ بِهِ فَوَادَ which states that this verse of the Quran was not revealed at all at once. In, in fact, those who, pe who were revealing, uh, when the Quran was being revealed, they were questioning, they were saying, why is this Quran revealed uh, not all at once? It should have been revealed all at, at once if it was a divine book of God. But however, it was done pieces by pieces. And Allah Almighty mentioned the, slide, the other slide uh, studio, the other slide, which is the other part of this verse, he states, It is a Quran in which we have divided into parts from time to time in order that thou mightest recite to men at intervals. We have re revealed it by stages. And this is another verse of the Holy Quran, chapter 17, verse 106. So this verses, these two verses which I have mentioned, Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, verse 32, and Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, verse 106, mentions or replies to the disbelievers, uh, to, to them, it gives a reply to them, the reason why the Quran was not revealed at once. It was done at uh, stages, slowly and rehearsed in a, in a rehearsed manner uh, so that m the mankind may benefit. Moreover, now when we look at the revelation period, how long this Quran took? 
or the, the length of time it took for the Quran to be revealed and the division of the Quranic surahs. We need to ask ourselves what, how long the, the, the Quran took to be revealed. Although we are, uh, we are aware that the Quran was, was revealed on the 16th of Ramadan, the 16th of Ramadan, that was the first revelation of the Holy Quran. But the entire revelation of the Holy Quran or the period of revelation spanned for 22 years, 2 months and 22 days. And at this time I'll ask studio, next slide please, the, the chart, the next slide. This slide, uh, it's a, a chart that helps us to better understand how the total period of revelation occurred. It took 22 years, 2 months and 22 days. The total period of revelation took 22, uh, 22 years, 2 months and 22 days. Also, we understand that the period of revelation, the total length, 22 years, 2 months and 22 days exactly or technically exactly, this is how long it took. Some approximated and they say it was 23 years. However, there's a traditional division of the surahs between those that were revealed in the city of Mecca and the city of Medina. The Makki surahs and the, the surahs that were revealed in Medina. Now from this chart we can see that in, in the period of Makki revelations or those surahs that were revealed in Mecca, it took 12 years, 5 months and 13 days in total. Revelation occurred and it is considered to be the Makki period. And also you see the chart says the Madani period, the period, the time frame, it took 9 years, 9 months and 9 days to, uh, to, uh, to reveal in Medina. And this reason, and inshallah we will discuss this, uh, inshallah, out of the 114 surahs revealed, the majority of them were revealed in the city of Mecca. From this chart, we can see that out of the 114 surahs, majority of the surahs were revealed in, in Mecca. You see what's happening? It took 12 years out of that 22 years, 12 years, the majority were revealed in Mecca. And a Makki surah is classified as such as the beginning was revealed in Mecca. Even if parts of it were later revealed during the, the, the Madani period or the Madani phrase, uh, Imam Sarukashi is of the opinion that 85 surahs were revealed in Mecca. Another, other com uh, commentators uh, believe that 86 surahs were revealed in Mecca, whilst others give a slightly higher number. Difference of opinion lies regarding to whether Surah Fatiha or Surah number 83, Al Muttafifin, Al Muttafifin, um, is revealed whether it is Makkah or Madine Surah. This is the difference of opinion. Now, Makki Surahs were revealed over a period, as I said, 12 to 13 years, from the first call of Islam up until Hijra. And now we have a bit of a misunderstanding or a misconception here and I would like to just highlight it so that we may know better inshallah and we can teach others what is actually a, a considered a Makki surah or a Madani surah when we see in the Holy Quran and we look at Surah Fatiha at the top at the beginning, you will see or Surah Baqarah or any Surah you look at it after Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim at the top of it you will see either written Makki or Madani now, some people say that Makki means it was revealed in Mecca and Madani means it was revealed in Medina. However, this is a bit, there's a misconception here. Makki revealed surahs technically means that surahs or those revelations that occurred before Hijra. Makki revealed surahs, this surah occurred or this revelation took place before Hijra. And Madani revealed surahs means that those surahs or revelation of verses of the Quran that occurred after Hijra, Alhamdulillah, after Hijra. So now Imam Zarukashi says 29 surahs were revealed in Medina and other commentators say 28. So there are difference of opinions. However, from that chart, we understand that 22 years in total, 114 surahs were revealed. Now the basic clarification as uh, concerning um, the Makki and Madini surahs, as I mentioned, the city of revelation, some ra rather say it is due to the hijra of the Prophet and surahs were revealed after the hijra of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu hence it was termed Makki and Madini. And I would just like to take a little time here to mention a little bit about this, uh, this is knowledge so that we may benefit, inshallah. So the ayat that were revealed during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu initial visit to Taif 
when Rasulullah went to Taif, those ones were revealed during the Hijrah itself are called Makif Surahs. Even the ayats that were revealed to the Prophet during the night of a journey, Isra wal Miraj, are considered to be Makki. So now these verses or, or surah uh, occurred and the Holy Prophet وسلم, wa was not in Makkah. Look, for example, he went on the night of Isra wal Miraj. He was ascended the heavens. So how can we say that it is a Makki revealed surah or a Madani revealed surah? Do you understand? Also, uh, when he went to Taif, Taif is not in Mecca, it is not uh, in Medina. Where is Taif located? So these verses, technically, it is based upon when Hijra occur or before Hijra. As I said, before Hijra, this would be called uh, Makki revealed surahs, or after Hijra, we call Madini revealed surahs. What's interesting is to note that Ayat is revealed, for example, let's take, for example, Ayat that is revealed in Hudaiba, in the Battle of Hudaiba or the Treaty of Hudaiba. And it is also near to Mecca. Even though the Ayat was, re it was um, revealed in Mecca itself, during the conquest of Mecca, it is considered to be Madani. Allahu Akbar. This, there are ayats in the Holy Quran that uh, discuss Hudaiba or the Treaty of Hudaiba. And even though this was revealed in Hudaiba, which is near to Mecca, it, it, uh, or even it is considered to be revealed in Mecca itself. During the conquest of Mecca, the, the, the Treaty of Hudaiba, these verses were revealed. It is considered to be Madani. This is considered to be Madani. So it's very interesting to understand how the categorization of Makki and Madani surah occurs. Our scholars put together a kind of classification. Our scholars, they put together a special kind of classification that differentiate the surahs being Makki or Madani. Now every surah which starts with the word Kalla. Some, you see some surahs start with the word Kalla, never. It disappears in Makki revealed surahs. Kalla, when you see surahs that begin, Kalla, these appears in Makki revealed surahs. This word has been used 33 times in 15 surahs and all these ayats are in itself uh, in the last half of the Holy Quran. According to the Hanifi scholars, every surah which has a sajda, a sajda, a sajda of tilawat, where you, when this uh, verse is, rec uh, re is recited, you need to make a sajda uh, of prostration, a prostration. These are considered to be makki surahs. Every surah in which, and according to the Hanaf, Hanafi, we have 14 places in the Holy Quran where we need to make a sajda of prostration, we need to bow down into sajda when we recite these verses of the Holy Quran or we hear these verses of the Holy Quran revealed, um, recited. And according to the Shawafi or the Shafi school of thought, there are 15 places. Uh, so according to us, Hanafi, we believe that those surahs which appear the ayat of uh, sajda, they are considered to be makki surahs. Every surah except surah al-Baqarah. Every surah except uh, Surah Al-Baqarah in which the story of Adam and Iblis is mentioned is, is Makki. Every surah except Surah Al-Baqarah is considered to be mentioned as Makki. For example, every surah in which the permission of jihad or the, the permission of granting uh, jihad or the description of jihad or the injunctions or the laws pertaining to jihad that has, has been revealed is considered to be Madani revealed surahs. Allahu Akbar. Now all Ayats with mentions about the hypocrites or the munafiqun. These um, ayats or all verses that mention about the hypocrites in particular are considered to be Madani revealed surahs. Now, I'm just mentioning how these surahs are classified so that we'll have a, a better knowledge or we'll have more in-depth knowledge onto, uh, into the classification of what is considered to be a Makki revealed surah or a Madani revealed surah. So I hope you are following with me. And these are some of the stipulations which the scholars have rightfully um, suggested why the surahs are considered to be Makki or Madani. Now, the Maki surahs generally consist of subjects pertaining to Tawheed, the oneness of God, prophethood, the day of judgment, the words of comfort for the prophet, and the narrating incidents of the past. Maki reveals surahs, in it you'll find um, subjects pertaining to Tawheed, prophethood, the day of judgment, the words that comfort the prophet Sallallahu in his time. Also narrating such incidents from the past, like stories of the past, but Madani surahs generally consist of family and social laws 
injunctions of jihad and expositions and the different limits and duties that the Muslims should carry and should not cross. So this is the difference between Makki revealed surahs and Madani revealed surahs. You see the Makki revealed surahs was geared about the beginning part of Islam, that, that time when, when Tawheed was very important. People needed to be brought towards the oneness of God and they needed to understand that the day of judgment will occur because some people, they deny the occurrence of judgment that they will not be brought back. They have this aqidah, they believe that they will not be brought back to give an account. And also at that time, the Prophet ﷺ was very, he was taunted by the disbelieving people. He was prosecuted, he was boycott. So certain verses were revealed to, for his comfort. And also in it were revealing, uh, revealed stories or narrations of the past. And when you look at the Madani or surahs that were revealed in Medina, uh, or considered Medina surahs, they, they consist of family-oriented life. How should one deal with family matters? How should one uh, have uh, social laws or injunctions relating to relationship with, with, with society? How we should live as a society? How we should live as a community? Also, the laws pertaining to jihad and the, the limits which we should, the boundaries which we should cross or which we should not cross. Also, what we find in Maki surahs, most of the confirmation is against idol worship or idolaters. Makki surahs, you find that these surahs uh, are based against idolaters, idolaters, those who worship idols. While Medina surahs were against the people of the book and hypocrites. Allahu Akbar. Those surahs were, that are considered Medina, Medini or verses, you find that this were, uh, this were uh, revealed with regards to the people of the book, Ahl al-Kitab and the Munafiqeen. The Munafiqoon, Munafiqeen, it, it was revealed against them. Now, the style of Makki surahs is very more majestic. It has a profusion of, of a lot of metaphors, and uh, it, it, they are used. Metaphors, similitudes are used in the Makki reveal surahs. The vocabulary is even more extensive, and the balaga is the balaga is eloquence. The, it's an Arabic term, balaga. It's eloquence. It is more eloquent. It is more extensive. It, the 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 parts of the parts of speech is so beautiful. There are a lot of metaphors uh, used even. And when you look at the style of the Madini uh, reveal surahs, it is more um, comparatively uh, in terms of uh, more lengthy and detailed. It's more detailed. It goes in depth. It's very lengthy. This is how you find the difference between the Madini and the Makkah reveal surahs. Now, the idolaters of Makkah were worshipping idols in the belief that these handcraft gods or statues or idols would act as an intermediary, a wasila between them and Allah. And the Makki ayats were all aimed at clarifying disposition or this misconception of the, those who worship idol. So more you'll find the Makki reveal surahs, it is based around this theme against the idolaters, those people who worship idols. So these Makki reveal surahs or ayats were based uh, were around this theme uh, in response to those who worship idols. The ayat taught the correct method of salah and worship and that Allah should be feared and worshipped. So dear viewers, before we go to, to a break now, let's just summarize about the Makki and Madini surahs. In summarization, one, a Makki surah deals mainly with affirming the oneness of God, the oneness in Allah, believing in His oneness, also known aka, also known as Tawheed. And these ayats instill faith and hope for those who believe. While the Madani surahs deal mainly with action or implementation of faith. Now, Makki surahs are generally pertaining to prophetic stories, while the Madini surahs deal with realization or fulfillment of prophecies and promises. So this is just a bit of a bit, um, conclusion. And moreover, we find that Makkan surahs emphasize on Banu Adam, the children of Adam, their relationship with Allah. While Madini surahs emphasize with the children of Adam, Adam the relationship with fellow men, how we should live with fellow men, how we should have a social reaction, how we should treat each other in our, our relationships, in our social and moral conduct with each other. And inshallah, when we return, we will be discussing further the compilation and divine revelation. Let's take a break at this moment. <laughs> 